How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is topic 19, Redox, volume four. What is the standard hydrogen electrode? So what is it? Let's find out, let's go. Okay, so higher level redox, volume four, what is the standard hydrogen electrode? We look at calculating E0 cell values, we discuss what makes up the standard hydrogen electrode, and then we talk about electroplating. IB understandings, applications and skills focus around a voltaic cell producing an electromotive force. Then we look at the conditions for the standard hydrogen electrode, and then we need to have a discussion about what is electrolysis and electroplating. The applications and skills where well, we need to be able to calculate E naughts and then we need to be able to work out what we need for an electroplating process. So some standard level revision, a voltaic cell is an apparatus for generating electricity through a spontaneous redox reaction. Voltaic cells are comprised of two half cells, oxidation occurs in one and reduction in the other. So on the Left hand side here we have our voltaic cell which contains a copper and copper 2 plus half cell and a zinc and zinc 2 plus half cell. They're connected by a salt bridge that connects the circuit and also helps to balance the ions. We have an, a, volt, a voltmeter to measure the E0 value or the voltage produced by this cell. So we've been given the overall reaction. Zn solid reacts with Cu2 plus to form Zn2 plus and Cu solid. So if we use our rules for oxidation numbers, we can see that zinc has undergone oxidation and copper has undergone reduction. Knowing that oxidation occurs at the anode, we can write that onto our diagram. We've got oxidation in the zinc half cell and that is now the anode, which will have a negative charge. The copper, it undergoes reduction, so it is defined as the cathode, and it must have a positive charge. Electrons will flow from the anode to the cathode. Now from the data book, we can also work this out. We can see that zinc is higher up on the table, so it will undergo oxidation to form zinc ions. Copper 2 plus lower on the table, it will have a redu reduction reaction to form copper solid. So zinc will be losing electrons, copper will be gaining electrons. Zinc is the stronger reductant, copper is the stronger oxidant. In the salt bridge which connects the two cells, we would need to balance the charges and the easy way to remember that is anions go towards the anode and cations go towards the cathode. So if we we're using KCl, the Cl- minus would head towards the anode and the potassium to the cathode. Now, a voltaic cell generates an EMF, an electromotive force, which results in the movement of electrons from the anode to the cathode, and the EMF is termed the cell potential. And the cell potential is the E0 value, or the maximum amount of voltage we could generate from these two half cells. And it's essentially just the difference of their potentials from the series. If you want a formula for that, We've got the E0 of the cathode, take away the E0 of the anode, and that will determine our total EMF or our total E0 cell value. So for this one, the E0 of the cathode was 0.34 and the E0 of the anode is negative at 0.76. So the maximum electromotive force we could generate is 1.10 volts. Now, where did these electromotive force values come from? Well, they've come from being connected to the standard hydrogen electrode or the SHE electrode. And it consists of a one molar solution of H plus and hydrogen gas being bubbled in through an electrode containing a platinum electrode, which is in contact with the solution and the gases. The solution must be at one molar and the gas pressure for hydrogen must be at 100 kPa. You can see over here on the diagram, it's kind of like an inverted test tube, hydrogen gas being pumped in at 100 kPa and 298 Kelvin and a one molar solution. Now it's been defined that the E0 value of the standard hydrogen electrode was zero. So that means that if hydrogen ions undergo reduction, they'll form hydrogen gas. And if hydrogen gas undergoes oxidation, it will form H+. So the H+, is an oxidizing agent and the H2 is a reducing agent. And the electrochemical series have been measured by connecting the half cells containing that standard one molar 
H plus and 100 kPa for gases to the SHE and measuring their strengths as oxidants or reductants. So if the voltage produced was positive when you connected up a cell to the hydrogen, then that implies that the species is a stronger oxidant than H+, and it was given a positive voltage. If the, the, the cell was connected and it produced a negative voltage when attached to the standard hydrogen electrode, it implies that the species is a stronger reductant than H2 and given a negative value. Now remember that all of, the, all of the times that we connected something to the hydrogen electrode, we had to have one molar solutions and then gases at 100 kPa and at a temperature of 298. So we just used hydrogen to work out the E naught of all of the other half cells in the series. So here we have one here with hydrogen connected to copper. Hydrogen has been defined as the negative electrode and copper here as the positive electrode. So that means that electrons are going from hydrogen to copper. In our copper half cell, we have copper two plus. So copper two plus must be a stronger oxidant because it's forcing hydrogen gas to undergo oxidation. H2 gas must be a stronger reductant because it is, under, it is forcing Cu two plus to undergo reduction. So in terms of the series, what we would see here is that copper would be given a positive E0 value because it has forced hydrogen gas to undergo oxidation. And in fact, it's plus three, four and would sit above hydrogen on the electrochemical series. So to calculate cell potential, and we did this in the first series, we need to look at the E0 of the cathode and the anode. So the E0 equals the cathode minus the anode, and we would strictly use the electrochemical series to work this out. I've got an image there of the electrochemical series from the data book, but you need to make sure you know how to use it and then how to work out the E0 values. So here we are with the copper zinc half cell, uh, copper zinc voltaic cell. And if we were asked to find the E0, well, if we locate both of those half equations on the series, then we really just need to find the difference, how far apart they are in the series. We could also apply the rule, the cathode minus the anode, but sometimes it's easier just to work out how far apart they are. So again, we use that table to work out that the electromotive force, the E0 cell was 1.10 volts. Okay, so moving on to a different application, which is electrolysis. Now, if we pass electrical energy from a power supply through a conducting solution, we call this electrolysis. And just like a cell, a Duracell battery, it has a positive and negative end. So does a power pack that you would connect up as well. The short little fat one is the negative. The long skinny one is the positive. During electro electrolysis, electrical energy is converted directly into chemical energy. And the reactions that occur are generally the opposite of what occurs in a voltaic cell. So that means they are non-spontaneous because we have to add in the electricity to get this to go. So if we have a look at the energy conversions, if we go from electrical energy to chemical energy, that would be electrolysis. And if we go from chemical energy to electrical energy, that is a voltaic cell or a battery. On the right hand side, silver plated cutlery, that is often made via electrolysis. So what is electrolysis? Okay, well electrolysis is a technique used to extract metals that are often difficult to be manufactured in other processes. And a good, another good example is tin cans are simply aluminium cans, but they're plated in tin to help reduce corrosion. So if we want to plate an aluminium can with tin, what we would do is we need to connect that up to the negative terminal of the power supply. And the power supply pumps electrons into the object that we want to plate. So it's connected to the negative electrode and we're pumping electrons into that electrode. So that means that this will be the cathode. The cathode will be the negative electrode in electrolysis. The other electrode is made up of a tin rod generally because we need to have ions in the solution that we want to coat with the metal. So if we want to coat tin onto the object, 
we need tin ions, and then we also need another tin electrode to replace any of those ions that are being coated onto the metal. So what will happen is the tin ions, the SN2 plus ions in the solution, they'll be attracted to the cathode, the negatively charged electrode, where they'll start to undergo reduction, and we will get a thin coating of tin onto our electrode. At the anode, the anode will undergo oxidation and tin metal will turn into tin ions and replace the ions in the solution. So a couple of key points on electroplating. Electroplating involves the coating of an object with a thin layer of metal. The object to be coated must be connected to the negative terminal of the power supply and is the cathode. It must be immersed in a solution which contains the metal ions and that is referred to as an electrolyte. Some of the finer details of electroplating, um, remember that we need to have a metal electrode that replaces the ions that are lost in the solution. Our cathode should be our object that's to be plated. And in this case, if I have a look at the reaction, the reaction at the cathode would be SN2 plus plus two electrons going to SN solid. At the anode, we want that to be the metal, uh, the metal made of metal that can replace the metal ion. So in this case, we would have a tin rod, which will be oxidized to tin ions and tin electrons. And the job of the anode is to be oxidized to balance the ions that are lost in the electrolyte, because if we get an imbalance, then the cell might stop working. In terms of what you would see, you would actually see this tin rod start to be decomposed. It will start to be eaten away. And eventually, it might be eaten away so much that if it, becomes, if it comes out of the solution, then the cell will stop working. We need to make sure that the electrode is in the solution. Another way that this cell might stop working is if we run out of ions in the solution. So if the SN2 plus concentration drops below a certain level, then tin may no longer be coated onto the cathode. If we were given a question with data, we would see that the anode will lose mass and the cathode will gain mass. So we could use some data analysis here to work out um, the charge and the current and time that we might need to do the electrolysis for, which is in a volume coming up later. Okay, topic 19, redox processes, volume four, some top tips. Make sure you've got a good understanding of standard level, know how to use the electrochemical series, and remember that E0 cell is the cathode minus the anode. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.